Great to have you here on Manufacturing Happy Hour. We're here at South Tech, here at the Smart Manufacturing Experience with Sesme. First question, I'm asking everyone this question because I think it's a good baseline to start, is what is your definition of smart manufacturing? And maybe more importantly, how do you describe a smart manufacturing mindset? Chris, first, thank you for having me, and I greatly appreciate the opportunity to talk about my passion about this whole topic of smart manufacturing. So, very apt question. Smart manufacturing to me is about really bringing two, three things together, actually. One is connectedness between different functions of manufacturing within the factory and outside. And then the next important component of that is obviously intelligence through data and other analytics and so on, which has become common stream. And the third very critical component is pe or people, right? You okay. got to bring people together. So if you can actually bring these three components together and actually innovate in terms of how you improve your processes or your response time, et cetera, everything to do with your customer and the people in your operations, that to me is smart manufacturing. So um, that really is how I have viewed it. And of course, if you now dissect between the lines, it's about innovation. It's always about innovation. And in this case, it happens to be process innovation to the, with the whole purpose of driving excellence. And good things happen when you do that. So a few of the things I heard, you mentioned connectivity both inside and outside the factory. I know we're going to be talking about that a lot today. Talk about data, and then you highlight people as well, which are three things I often hear in connection with digital transformation also. Yeah. And I feel like some people use these terms interchangeably, digital transformation, smart manufacturing. So is smart manufacturing different than digital transformation, and if so, how? Uh, I don't know if it is different. To me, I actually think of smart manufacturing as a mindset. Okay. And digital manufacturing is an endeavor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a huge uh, task for the most part because you need to change people's minds. And then you have to invest and so on and so forth that comes with digital transformation. To me, I think having a smart manufacturing mindset is one of the components of digital transformation. There are others, right? But that's how I see it. And yeah. then the other thing is tip, smart manufacturing can also be more pointed. It can last maybe just a week or two weeks or two months, whereas digital transformation tends to be a lot longer, at least in years, right? At least a year or two. So maybe if, if I'm hearing it right, you define smart manufacturing as more of a mindset and yeah. then digital transformation is a subset of that or the activity that takes place when you're in That's that right. mindset. Okay, I like, I like that. I like that style. Now, I have a question for you because before you were doing full bore, you yeah. were with Stanley Black & Decker. Right. You were leading their transformation. You were leading smart manufacturing there. How did you build the vision for Stanley Black & Decker's digital transformation? See, in the, in the case of Stanley Black & Decker, um, uh, like most transformation, it was completely appending uh, what the company did in terms of product innovation and then uh, operations, and that's where I came in in my role as, as a leader for that whole in, in, you know, initiative. And, and third thing, of course, was how, how they actually engaged in the market, more on the marketing and, and so on, uh, and business models. Mm -hmm. So that's how Stanley Black, uh, Black & Decker approached it. And so to that end, it was a lot more than this digital transformation. Yeah. And so it was, it was a lot larger and it in, you know, in, included many uh, facets uh, as I just described. So from that perspective, it was a lot more comprehensive, a lot more challenging, but also equally extremely exciting yeah. uh, because of the kind of things that uh, Stanley Black & Decker really uh, took on as challenges and helped make some of those very successful benchmark for the industry. So that's how I see uh, Stanley Black & Decker's transformation as compared to others that I was part of before I joined SBD. Uh, as the head of smart manufacturing at Wipro, I started the group at Wipro. Mm -hmm. I actually engaged with a lot of other companies, big, uh, big brands like Philips Corning and, and British Tobacco and, uh, and uh, TE Connectivity and on and on. Uh, so in those those instances, it was a lot more, lot more uh, focused around some aspects of transformations. 
as compared to what I described about Stanley Black & Decker? Yeah, what stuck out right at the start of the answer, I didn't even need to write it down for this one, but you said you upended yeah. operations, which is pretty dramatic, right? It is a disruptive thing that yeah. you do to the day-to-day -day when you're trying to transform, when right. you are transforming. So the follow-up I have is, if you had to name one, two, or three like must-dos that allowed your transformation to be successful, what would those best practices be that you'd want to share for the manufacturing leaders that are listening out there today? So obviously, like anything else, whether it is something as small as trying to convince your family to do something different, you need to have a compelling reason why you're going to change yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You can call it, you can use fancy words like vision and aspiration and all of that, but you really need to know why and be convinced as the leader of the transformation, why you're going to embark on this huge endeavor, right? And to do that, you have to not only have a wonderful idea and clarity in terms of what your vision is, but also be communicating, you know, be able to communicate effectively. And by that I mean, especially in operations, you need to be able to communicate to the plant floor folks, which is very different than talking to senior management or engineers and so on. So you need to be very cognizant of that. And, and the second thing that I think every transformation should have is you've got to have a, a dual speed mode, okay, where you need to be able to deliver some quick wins while you're working on long-term, you know, breakthrough innovation type projects, which is exactly what we did at Stanley Black & Decker, is to really engage on those two toggle between the short term, put some wins. Three months to me is, is the maximum, right? Okay. In three months, you got to deliver something that people can touch and feel. And third, uh, I think you need to be able to be hands-on as a leader. You cannot be uh, sitting in an office having your team do uh, to all of the work. So to me, these would be the three critical components yeah. uh, of, of transformation. Once, of course, you get things going, and once you got some momentum, then you tweak back, right? Uh, but the dual speed mode, uh, amazing, compelling vision. And one last thing, you asked only three, and I'll ask you, give you a fourth one, is you got to have plant champions, right? Uh, to the point I was making, you need to bring some folks who have listened to your vision and engaged on it, and are very compelling in terms of convincing others and getting them to you know, join the uh, transformation, you need plant champions. So we use that very successfully in SPD and other companies that I've actually led transformations. Yeah, that's, that's an incredible list. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight the first two because I'd love to get specific on the first two because I think what you said is very important around you need a compelling reason for the transformation. When I hear that, that, that means something you want to achieve over the course of multiple years. That's right. You also said the dual speed mode because you want some quick wins, something that you can show, hey, it's only been three months, but here's some little wins. So can you give me an example of a compelling reason for a digital transformation as well as what a quick win might look like, just so we've got something a little more tangible for the audience? So one of the compelling reasons to me goes back, let's start with people, right? Yeah. Especially where we are in, in the in the globe, especially in the US. Um, talent is hard to come by, people are hard to come by. So to me, one of the most, the first compelling reason is, how do you actually create new pathways and new opportunities for your factory floor workers? Start with that, right? And so there's so many things you can do with all the technologies that we're seeing right here at the show that you can really create new pathways for the people. And when you do that, beautiful thing hap things happen in terms of margin, you know, fill rate, and all those good business requirements. Let's start with people. So to me, you do that, then wonderful things happen because you're now trying to see somebody who's got a high school degree or less to see how can I actually, somebody who's been at it for about eight, 10 years, now suddenly to say with this transformation using technology and others that he or she can actually become an inspector or a supervisor and so on and so forth, right? So I think that is, that's so exciting to me. And it's something that people talk about, but it's never the first thing that becomes part of the transformation. Mm -hmm. And that's a great answer because you focus on the people and then the business results that would come from doubling down on the folks on the plant floor. Yeah. 
So what's that quick win then? What's an example of a quick win that like, hey, I'm going through this transformation, but I want to see something happen yeah, in three months. I'll tell you, it, 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 it's, it's, I'm so glad you asked that question because one of the things that happened that when I was doing these um, along with my team at Stanley Black & Decker, this was about four years ago, and that's where Cobot started to really come, come together uh, in its potential and its value. So the first quick win or, or a short term win kind of project that we engaged on is how do you actually put Cobot in three months or less working with you know, uh, several companies, both big and small, Panic and uh, Ready Robotics and Rockwell and all of those you know, big OEMs. What we did was we actually then started helping uh, take the dull, dirty and dangerous operations out of the operations, right? Mm. So that's really is the first thing that we did. And when we did that, suddenly the person who is really, for example, is CNC tech, was so now consumed tending to machines and tending to the, the grime of actually operations, suddenly started managing three or four cobots. And he started doing more of the work that he was really passionate about, which is to create some amazing, you know, better CNC programs. So this to me was a great example. And so we started with that, and it really yielded results because, again, has a people aspect to it, and quick, you know, quick turnaround, return on investment of maybe six months to nine months, phenomenal, and and great results that you can touch and feel. So you satisfied all of those components. Yeah, you yeah, excellent answer. Taking technology to make something safer, and then it's a very tangible thing. A cobot is something you can see out there. You can yeah. see it moving. It's not necessarily let's say some of the data that's going to create a lot of impact down the line, but maybe not as visible and tangible as a cobot is. That's exactly right. I love the examples you're sharing. One thing I want to do before we wrap up is, is scale this down a bit. Because when I think of Stanley Black & Decker, I think of a big company. So that's how a big company transforms. Yeah. What advice do you have for mid-sized manufacturers or smaller manufacturers that need to transform? Thank you again for the segue, which happens to be a passionate topic of mine in what we're doing at Full Bore along with CCAC and, and others in Connecticut, is now how do you actually take, uh, take all of the progress that I've, you know, that's happening in the industry and what I've seen in terms of innovation and how you use you know, dollars and make it more effective to, to change businesses? Um, I think to answer your question for small to medium business, you don't have to uh, really uh, focus on, let me, let me step back a little bit. Just because you're smaller doesn't necessarily mean that your aspiration needs to be smaller. It's just that you have to be smarter in terms of where you start, right? You see what I'm saying? Like that. So you got to be smarter in terms of where you start and then really move the needle uh, in terms of then saying, hey, can I actually make this work for me? So on that note, one of the things, again, based on the experience that I've had for 10, 12 years doing transformation for big companies, the first thing that we're doing is what's called as digital jumpstart, right? So which essentially means that, and again, going back to three months or less, okay, we, can we actually show results of seven to 12% productivity, right? Which is sort of the magical number, if you will. And so now what happens is most business owners, they're still, they love technology, they're you know, eager to know more, but they're skeptical equally, right? So now when you say, hey, here's how I can show something in a very short amount of time and we really see an impact in dollars and, and, and customer growth, because that's another thing that SMEs have, is they want to grow the business. They're so stuck in making operations work, they have very little time to, little time to grow the business. So if you can address that, again, going back to the smarter aspect of it, and doing something meaningful in a short amount of time, again, touching people, then I think they will find the money, because that's what this whole thing is all about, is how can you actually get an ROI that is tangible. And we can, we can do that because of all of these amazing things that's happening on this floor and, and others. Yeah, I like that term, digital jumpstart, and being able to show like a meaningful percentage increase in productivity or one of the, let's say, the, the compelling reasons for doing a transformation, as right. you said. Last, oh, okay, what were one you One last say? thing, and when you do that, that's one of the critical needs for the country right now, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at, uh, obviously, I'm part of 
the whole smart manufacturing initiative and SESME and, 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 and passion that SESME has. Mm -hmm. So the whole country, if you look at productivity per person, for the first time in many decades, not only has it flattened out, it is dipping. In fact, three months back, I saw a couple of articles in the journal that talks to that. So when you do that, when you have small to medium companies that make up 99% or 97.9%, .9%, sorry, of manufacturing, if you now start having them lift productivity, beautiful things happen for the whole country, right? So I think it starts with productivity. Well, when you talk about doing things for the country, things also start at your local state as well. And this is my, my final question for you is, you're involved in the Connecticut MEP. So, you know, how is this helping get smart manufacturing best practices implemented by being involved in an organization like that at the state level? Right, and, and to your point, you got to start somewhere. And you need to start, most states are very uh, excited about technology. But the fact of the matter is in the northeastern states where manufacturing and cost of living is a lot higher. So th those states are doing more to attract companies into manufacturing. Whereas in the south where we are, especially in South Carolina, North Carolina, I mean, there's already a lot of activity, people coming in. So going back to where, where I was going is uh, Connecticut happens to be one of those companies where there's a lot of passion and there's solid uh, leadership at the state level from the governor on down, and whether it's CCAT and CONCEP and so on. So now I picked the state, and I was passionate about that because of Stanley Black and Decker. Mm -hmm. and I was part of the you know the governor's work, you know, like the council, etc. Through at the proxy for my CEO at that time. So long story short, I wanted to start somewhere, and it was it's home after home for me in Connecticut. So now I'm partnering with CCAT. And so that really is what we're doing right now. And then in being part of SESME and so on, we hopefully then want to cut and paste some of the things that we will be doing in Connecticut. Well, Sudi, I know this was only a, a just over 15 minute conversation, but a ton of advice for the leaders out there, big and small, working on their smart manufacturing initiatives. Thank you so much for jumping on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers.